Hi everyone, in this video, I will be discussing about measures of central tendency and dispersion. To start with, we have here a definition. So, a central tendency or measure of central tendency is a central or a typical value for a probability distribution. It may also referred it may also be referred to as a center or location of the distribution. The term central tendency refers to the middle or perhaps the typical value of the data and is measured using the mean, median and the mode. So the measures of central tendency uh, it tends to describe or it attempts to describe the set of data by identifying uh, the central position within the set of data. So we have here uh, the mean, the median, and the mode. I think uh, you're already familiar with this one since you already discussed uh, these topics during your junior high school and senior high school years. So to start with, we have here the mean. So the mean is the widely used measure of central tendency. It is referred to as the average of the numbers in a given set of data. In order to calculate for the mean, just get the sum of the numbers and divide it by the total number of numbers in the data set. So the mean is denoted by the symbol x bar. So this symbol right here that is read as x bar. So we have here the formula to find the mean. This one. So that's x bar is equal to the summation of all x over n so x there is the value of an observation and n is the total number of observation so this symbol right here summation meaning you have to add all the data given and after adding all the values or the data you have to divide it by the total number of observation so it's just simply uh, like getting the average adding all the numbers or adding all the data then dividing it by, uh, by as to how many numbers there are in the given data set so example number one find the mean of the set of values three four six eight nine and five so using the formula um, x bar is equal to the summation of all x over n so what we did is simply add all the given data that's 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 9 plus 5 and dividing it or those numbers by as to how many numbers there are in the given data set so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so it is 6 since there are 6 numbers in the given data set. So, getting the sum, we have here 35 over 6. And dividing 35 by 6, we get uh, 5.83. So, therefore, the mean of the set of values is 5.83. So, um, for your final answer, you can round it to the nearest um tens, hundreds, digit. So, in terms of decimal points, um, just use two decimal points. The next measure of central tendency is the median. The median is the value separating the higher half of a data sample and population higher half of a data sample, a population, or a probability distribution from the lower half. So for a data set, it may be thought of as the middle value. It is denoted by the symbol MD. So earlier for mean, the symbol was X bar. For median, it's simply lowercase m then D. So for example, in the given data set, the set of numbers 1, 3, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 9, the median is 6. 
So, um, if you will be given a data set, make sure first to arrange um, the data from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. And then, um, in order to get the median, just look for the middle most score. So, for the first set of data, since there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there are 7 numbers in the set of data since it's odd. So, we can um, basically get the middlemost score, which is 6, since there are 3 numbers below it and uh, 3 numbers above. But um, for the next set of data, uh, the set of numbers 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 12, since there are 6 numbers in the given data set, since it's um, even, you need to get uh, the 2 middlemost score then get the mean so just simply add the 2 then divide it by 2 so therefore the median is 7.5 so therefore if the set of data is even i mean odd if there are odd numbers the numbers um there are odd number of data set like the first example since there are seven you just simply get the middlemost score but if the data set is even just like the second example you need to get the two middlemost score then divide it by the next measure of central tendency is the mode the mode of a set of data values is the value that appears most frequent so the mode is the most commonly occurring value in a distribution mode may exist sometimes mode may exist sometimes and sometimes it does not it, if it if it exists sometimes it has one mode or sometimes it has more than one mode so the mode is denoted by lowercase m Oh. So I think uh, the definition was clear. Um, the mode is the most frequent number, the number that occurs uh, more than once in a given data set. And um, sometimes there is no mode since there are no reoccurring numbers. Sometimes there is one, sometimes there are two, three, or more modes. So, if there's no mode, you just simply write no mode. If there are two, that's called bimodal. If there are three, that's trimodal. If there are four or more, we call that one a multimodal. So, for the first example, given the data set, the numbers, set of numbers 3, 2, 7, 3, 4, 5, the mode there is 3. Since 3 is repeated the most, since in the data set, uh, the number 3 is being repeated. For the next example, given the data set, the numbers, the set of numbers 4, 5, 3, 4, 7, 5, 6, 3, 8. The modes are uh, 4, 5, and 3 since they are repeated more than the other item. So... Here we have two fours, we have uh, two fives, and we have uh, two threes. So um, those numbers are our mode since they are reoccurring. So if there are three modes, we call that one as trimodal. And our modes are again the numbers four, five, and three. So again, um, those were the three measures of central tendency. The mean is the average. Just simply add all the numbers, then divide it by as to how many numbers there are in the data set. The median, it's the middle most score. If there are uh, odd numbers in the data set, or if the data set is odd, then just simply get the middle most score. But don't forget to arrange the numbers first uh, from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. Then if the data set uh, is even, so just simply get the two middle most score, then divide it by two. Third one is the mode. Mode is the number that is most reoccurring or being repeated in the data set.
So next we proceed with the measures of dispersion. So the terms variability, spread, and dispersion are synonyms. They refer to how spread out a distribution is. So measures of dispersion tell us how much the data tend to disperse or scatter. So one measure of dispersion is what we call as the range. So um, for the measures of central tendency, those were the mean, median, and mode. For the measures of dispersion, we have the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. The range is uh, the simplest uh, mode of dispersion or measure of dispersion. So the range for a set of data is found by subtracting the smallest value from the largest value uh, in the given data set. So it's simply subtracting the highest number by the lowest number. So for example, the grades of 10 students are shown below. The respective range for male and for female students is also shown in the table. Note that the mean is 85. So um, we have here the scores or the grades of the students. For uh, the female, uh, their scores are the following 82, 83, 85, 87, and 88. For the male, that's 70, 82, 86, 90, and 97. So it's also given that the mean is 85. So um, how did they get 85? We just simply added all the numbers and divided by as to how many um, numbers there are in the data set. Now for the female set of data, the range is 6. Why? We simply look for the highest number, which is 88, then subtract it by the lowest number, which is 82. So 88 minus 82, that is 6. Therefore, the range for the grades of the female is 6. Now for the male, uh, the highest score or the highest grade is 97, and the lowest is 70. So again, in finding the range, just simply subtract 97 minus 70, that is 27. The second measure of dispersion is the variance. So the two com commonly used measures of variation that consider all scores in a given data set are variance and standard deviation. Um, for the range, it actually doesn't um, consider all the data since you only subtract the highest and the lowest. Whereas um, in variance and in standard deviation, all the scores in the data set are being uh, taken into consideration. So using the example earlier, let us um, again use that one in order to solve for the variance. So study the table below. You may tell yourself that you are familiar with the procedure since um, this topic has already been tackled and discussed to you during your junior high school and senior high school years. So given the scores of the female or the females, uh, 82, 83, 85, 87, and 88, uh, the first thing we need to do in order to get the variance is to find the difference of the mean from the score, from the individual score. So there, x sub i, this one, that one, that is the individual score. Then x bar, as I have mentioned earlier, that is the mean. And the mean is already given, which is 85. So here, we have 82 minus 85. Since the individual score is 82 minus 85, the mean, so that's negative 3. Next, we have 83 minus 85, that gives us negative 2. Next, 85 minus 85, that's 0. 87 minus 85, that's 2. And for the last score, uh, that's 88 minus 85, which is 3. 
So the very first thing in order to get the variance is to simply subtract the individual score by the mean. After getting the difference, so we need to square uh, the difference of the mean from the score. So since we already have 3 earlier, or negative 3 I mean, just simply square that one, negative 3 times negative 3, that gives us 9. So next we have the score of negative 2. So negative 2 squared, that's 4. Then 0 squared, that's simply 0. Then 2 squared, that's 4. And 3 squared, that is 9. So again, first thing is subtract. Then after getting the difference, you need to square uh, the answer. So next, in order to get the variance, you find the sum of the squares of the difference of the mean from the score. So after getting all of these scores, you need to add everything up. So that's 9 plus 4 plus 0 plus 4 plus 9. That gives us the result of 26. So after getting uh, the sum of the squares of the differences, we now divide the sum of the squares of the difference of the mean, deviation from the mean, from the score with the number of scores in the given set of data. So since there are five females in the given data set, so simply uh, divide the sum by five. So uh, dividing that's 5.2. Therefore, the variance of the data set is 5.2. So let's have uh, <clears throat> this next example. The variance of the scores of five male students is computed and shown below. So earlier, uh, we solved for the variance using the grade or the scores of the female students. Now let's have the scores of the male, the male students. So again, the very first thing that we need to do is to subtract each individual score by the mean. So since the first score or grade is 70, and we already know that the mean is 85, so simply subtract 70 by 85, then you square the answer. Then next we have the second score, that's 82 minus 85, then again you square and so on. So 86 minus 85 squared plus 90 minus 85 squared plus 97 minus 85 squared. So um, after getting the difference and the square, you look for the sum, add them together. We got uh, the answer of 404. Then dividing it by the number of scores or grades since there are five male students. So that's 404 divided by 5. That gives us 80.8. So therefore, the variance for the score or the grade of the male students is 80.8. So we have here the steps in order to solve for the variance. So to compute for the variance for a given set of data, we must perform these steps. Number one, determine the mean for the given set of data. So earlier, uh, the mean was already given. But if it is not given, to solve for the mean, add all the scores, then divide it by as to how many given uh, data in the uh, data set. Number two, determine the deviation from the mean for each value in the data the deviation is when you subtract the individual score by the uh, mean number three square each deviation so after getting the difference you square the answer and number four compute the mean of the squared deviation so um after squaring each uh, difference just simply add them all up then divide by as to how many uh, numbers there are in the given data set. So next we have the standard deviation. So the standard deviation formula is obtained by simply getting the square root of the variance. So in summation notation, the formula from the standard deviation in a population is given by the parameter. So this is the uh, formula for standard deviation, but actually, 
if you already have the variance all you have to do is to solve for the square root and you will have your standard deviation so let us again consider the grades of 10 students below still the same example so from the previous section the variance for the five female students course is 5.2 so, hence, the standard deviation for the 5 female students score is 5.2 or approximately 2.28. Um, we need to solve for the square root. So, um, the standard deviation is approximately 2.28. Next, the variance of the scores of the five male students is 80.8. Thus, the standard deviation is uh, the square root of 80.8 or approximately 8.99. So, we can say that the scores of the five male students is really more spread out than the score of the five female students. So, since uh, measures of dispersion measures how spread out the scores are, so since the uh, standard deviation for the male is 8.99, for the female is 2.28, we can say that the scores of the male students are more spread or are more far from each other. Since as we can see that the highest is 97, the lowest is 70, whereas for the female, the highest is 88 and the lowest is 82 which is uh, closer to each other compared to the scores of the male students so uh, that's it for this discussion uh, for any questions or clarifications you may uh, comment that on the comment section below you may also send it in our group chat or you can send me a private message so that I can answer your questions. For your attendance, just simply comment down your complete name, your course, and your block number. Thank you so much, guys. You take care always. Bye for now.